Hello my tricks. In this video we're going to go over a few more examples of naming alkanes and I'm still going to call this level easy to moderate. So let's just recap what we learned in the previous video. If you missed that video, you want to go check it. You're going to want to go check it out. So, in the previous video, we looked at the IUPAC or IUPAC naming system for alkanes. So basically it's the international standards to which we need to adhere to when naming our alkanes, IUPAC. So in the exam, you'll see they say, give the IUPAC name or IUPAC name of the following compounds. Those are just the basic set of rules that we've been learning. So here's an example. In this case, we named two methylhexane. Our main chain had six carbons, so hex, referring to six, six. <laughs> Ane, because it's an alkane, you see it's got only single bonds, no multiple bonds. And on carbon two, if we number it so that the branch is the lowest number, from left to right, we can see that on carbon two, I have a methyl branch. Remember, your prefix is always going to be the position and the name of your branches, then the number of carbon atoms, and then the homologous series. And I did mention in the previous video that punctuation is important. So what I mean by punctuation is, if, for example, in this name, 2,4 dimethylheptane. 2 and 4 are numbers. Numbers are separated by commas. And then numbers and letters are separated by dashes. If I had to draw out this compound, guys, how would it look? Let's think about this. Heptane means 7 carbons. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. That's my main chain. Hept. Ane, it's an alkane, so it's only got single bonds. Then 2,4 dimethyl. Now we haven't done an example like this, but essentially what they're telling you is on carbon number two and on carbon number four, I have methyl branches. Remember methyl branches has one carbon in the branch. So how this would look is as follows. On carbon two, I have a methyl branch, which is an extra carbon, remember, with its hydrogens. You can draw the methyl branch at the bottom or at the top. It doesn't matter as long as it's on carbon two. And then again on carbon four, there's another methyl branch. And that's it. Now, why dimethyl? Well, di means two. Because I have two methyl branches in this carbon, I need to put the word di in there. If I had three methyl groups, I would say trimethyl. Now, we're not done. Please never leave your organic compounds looking like this. We need to add in our H's. Remember alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. In other words, they consist of only carbons and hydrogens and single bonds only. Each carbon must have four bonds. So we can double check that as we're filling in our H's, make sure that every carbon has four bonds. Then we go ahead and fill in the H's. Let's do it. If you draw a bit big like me, it might get a bit confusing. It looks a bit ugly. You guys can do a much neater job, but essentially make sure that every carbon has four bonds. So it's attached either to another carbon. So over here, that would be one bond. And over here, that would be bond number two. That would be bond number three. And this hydrogen over here would be bond number four. Awesome. Let's jump into some naming alkanes examples. So these again are branch chains. So step number one, refer to the steps in the previous video if you need to. Step number one is always, for all homologous series, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. So this, three carbons, is my longest continuous carbon chain. We need to keep in the back of our mind that three refers to prop, 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 propane. It's going to end in ane because it's an alkane, but... On carbon number two, I have a branch. This is a branch. And what is this branch? Is it a methyl branch or an ethyl branch? It's a methyl branch because it's got one carbon. Now just take note, we always wanna number our carbons in our main chain so that the branch has the smallest number. But because this branch is in the middle on carbon two, it doesn't matter if I number the carbons from left to right or right to left. So the name of this guy is two, methyl, and then what is three carbons? Propane. If you break down the name, it makes complete sense. On carbon two, we have a methyl branch. In our main chain, we've got three carbons, so prop, prop, and it is an alkane, so it must end in ane. What about example number two? Now be careful. 
we need to first, step one, identify the longest chain or the main chain. So if we go like this, one, two, three, four, five, that would be the longest chain. Here's what I can also try, but it doesn't end up making any difference in this example. I could try it like this. Let's change my color so I can show you. I could take a look at it and be like, oh, but the, the chain kind of looks like it bends. You could try it. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, but that's the same as the blue option. So our longest chain is five carbons. And yes, as long as it's a continuous chain, the carbon chain can bend and twist as long as it's a continuous chain. But as we said, that's the same as the blue one. Five is our longest chain. Then we need to see, do I have any branches? Yes, I do. This is a branch. Remember, another word for branch is substituent or alkyl group. And now if we consider this, we need to think about this. How many carbons are in this branch? I count two carbons. So what is this branch called? It is an ethyl branch, eth for two carbons. I did discuss ethyl, methyl, propyl in a previous video. So you might want to check that out if you don't know what's going on. Now we need to name the main chain so that the branch has the lowest number. But again, the branch is in the middle of the compound. So it doesn't matter if I number these carbons from left to right or right to left, the branch will still be on carbon three. So our name, and I'm going to write it skew, but that's just so I can fit it in and show you guys, is three ethyl. And then how many carbons in the main chain? Five. So it's pen Tain. Three ethyl on carbon three. I have an ethyl group, five carbons, and it ends in N because it's an alkane. What about example number three? Now, you need to be careful in this example. If I look at for the longest chain and I say, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that the longest chain? One, two, three, four, five, six. How about this one? Look carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one might catch you. It's bending, but it's still continuous. As long as it's a continuous chain, we're fine. So this over here, the one with seven, is the longest continuous carbon chain. So we know that seven is hept. So just keep that in mind for later. This is going to be heptane, hept. But I do have a branch over here, here's my branch. I need to figure out what number that branch falls on. So remember, we want to name our carbons so that the branch has the lowest possible number. We can number our carbons from left to right or right to left, so long as we give the branch the lowest possible number. So if I name, if I number the branch the, this way, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. The branch is now on carbon five. If I try and number it the other way, one, two, three, that way makes more sense because then the branch will be on carbon three and three is lower than five. So I'm going to scratch out this way of numbering. That's not the, the lowest way. And I'm going to number it from the bottom and going up. So one, two, three. So our branch is on carbon three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got a methyl branch because it's got one carbon. So it's three methyl heptane three methyl heptane on carbon three we have a methyl group remember we want to name our carbons in the main chain so that the branches have the lowest possible number number four we need to find the longest chain if i go like that that's three carbons right if i go like that that's also three carbons so three is the longest continuous chain then that's a branch that's a methyl branch that's a branch that's also a methyl branch right they're not ethyl branches it's one methyl branch at the top one methyl branch at the bottom separate branches so three carbons in the main chain so it's propane prop for three if i number the carbons I, it doesn't matter if i number it left to right or right to left the branches are going to be on carbon number two now we need to show that there's two methyl branches. So what we do is two comma two dash dimethyl propane. 
Now, grade 12s, you might say, why are we saying 2, 2? They're both on the same carbon, so why can't I just say 2? No. Every time you are telling me about the position of a branch, you need to mention the number of the carbon that it's on. Because they're both on 2, it's 2, 2. Why 2, comma? What's up with the comma? Remember, the comma separates numbers. Then please don't forget the die. Die is because I have two of them. Methyl because there's one carbon in each branch and propane because the main chain has three carbons. Our last example for this video and in the next video I'll deal with more complicated examples. Let's locate the main chain so I can already see it. It's one, two, three, four, five. Now I want to number the carbons in the main chain so that the branches, here's a branch and here's a branch. We want to number the carbons in the main chain so that the branches have the lowest number. So it makes sense to number it from right to left. One, two, three, four, five. If I numbered the carbons the other way, the carbons would, the branches would be on carbon four. That doesn't work. Two is lower than four. So our name is two comma two dimethyl. How many carbons in the main chain? Again, we've got five. We seem to like five. Pentane. Awesome, guys. This was level easy, I would say. If you enjoyed this video and you want to go up a level with me, remember to subscribe, like this video, comment down below, tell me what you want to see. In the next video, I may do more complex examples. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you in the next video.